since the last episode was a bit on the long side, this one is going to be pretty quick as I promised. In this episode I'm going to show you how you can validate your forms. As you will see, it will be pretty easy since October comes with form validation out of the box. So, uh, first of all, we are going to use two classes that we are going to be needing in this for this episode so for form validation the first one is validator and the second one is redirect so we're just going to use validator and the second one is going to be redirect we do all of that on our contact form.php that we did in the previous episode and now in our on send function we need to create that validator if we check out the documentation right here, you can see how the validator is used. So you, first of all, you tell the validator which fields you are going to be validating and supply the values for those fields. And then you tell the validator how it should validate those fields. So in our example, I'm just actually going to copy this because we are going to be using the same code. So I'm just going to go right here paste this in and we don't need the password and we don't need the password here but we need a name and email so we are validating name and email uh, name should be required and email uh, should also be required and it should pass email validation so you just do this validator equals validator make and the name is going to be this right here so input get name just like we did for this vars variable right here okay so that's it and the email should be input get email so we are getting our information from our contact form so uh, what is going to happen when you click send uh, that information is first uh, going to go to this validator and then the validator is going to validate our form so the name is going to be required and the email is going to be uh, required and also uh, it has to pass email validation and that's about it so our validator is already set up of course if we leave our code like this nothing will happen because we just validated the data right here, but we are still sending emails. So the email is going to pass, it's going to be sent, and we did nothing. So we have to find a way to say to October, okay, so if this validation doesn't pass, then return the user to the page that they're on and display the error messages, else, so if the validation passes, then send that email. And to do that, you just do this. So we are, what we are saying right here, so we have this fails method. So we are saying if validator, so this one here, if it fails, then do something. So don't send the email, else if the validator doesn't uh, fail, then uh, set up our variables and uh, send our email somewhere. Okay, so we did that. Now we just have to uh, tell the October what to do when the validator fails. So first of all, I just want to say I'm not pulling uh, all of that code uh, out of thin air. As you can see, you have the documentation right here and you have validator fails and so on, what to do with it and uh, how October CMS uh, should act, actually what code should you use. You can also use if validator passes method, whatever you want. So uh, we are going to return So return redirect back, so return to the page that you're currently on with errors and uh, you send, the validator is going to provide us with errors that happened uh, depending on what you are validating. Okay, so that's it for uh, the validation. The only thing that is left is we have to display those errors somehow. So to do that, uh, we are going to go to watch learn contact comp 
components contact form and our default form and right here I'm just going to write some twig uh, code and HTML code to display our errors so I'm just going to create an uh, unordered list and then in that list I'm going to uh, set up a for each loop which is going to go through all of our errors and display error one by one on a list item okay so it's a very simple for each loop so we are going to set up variable error and it's going to go uh, through all of the errors in errors.all so this is the uh, variable that this validator passes to our view and it's going to go through all of those errors and display them so we can test this out so i'm just going to go to my contact form and i'm going to click send let me just refresh the page first okay and now if i click send as you can see it tried to send the email but it says the name field is required the email field is required of course you can style this whatever you like uh, so if i set up my name here and try to send the email right now now you just get the email field is required you can also uh, do a bit more complex validation so let's say the name will be required and it's going to require us to enter at least five letters in the name so we can do something like and now if i save this uh, go to my page refresh it and if i write joe again here so it's just three three letters and try to send that as you can see the name must be at least five characters so you have a lot of validation rules that you can check on this page right here so as you can see there are pretty much the same validation rules that you would get with laravel so you have this accepted digits email uh, ip address uh, you can uh, validate the date, the date format, uh, regular, exp uh, you can validate by regular expression, um, you can uh, uh, require the field to be numeric, uh, and so on. So as you can see, you have a lot of validation rules that you can use, and you use them pretty much all the same way. So for example, required, and if you need one more rule, then you do the pipe, and then you set minimal characters, and so on. Also, you may want to uh, display the error messages below the input fields that you have on your form. So maybe we want to display the uh, name error right here. So to do that, you would just do... So errors.first name for email, it will be errors.first email. Okay, if we save this now and go to our page, let's just click send. And now you would get those error messages right here. Of course, the styling isn't very good right here, but when you style it, it could be pretty effective for the user to see exactly what field uh, did the error and also what the error was. Also, you can maybe uh, do something like uh, if this exists, then add error class on that input field. So you may want to uh, make this border to be red or background to be uh, light reddish or something like that. So as you can see, validation in October CMS is pretty easy. Uh, of course, remember this is uh, validation for all the forms that you would have on your front end. So you don't have to have forms for just sending emails, for just, th this doesn't have to be a contact form. It could be a form for, uh, I don't know, adding movies. So uh, instead of this mail function on send that we are using, you can maybe create a new model and uh, fill that model with some data and uh, this validation will work with all of those forms 
So I guess this is it for this episode. Remember, everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. If you want to ask me questions, you can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter or on GitHub. Uh, also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel and the content I put out, maybe subscribe to it. And I think that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.